Hi, Michael Belikove here for today's Campus Magazine at the 2013 DevLearn Conference. And I'm joined today by Andrew Hughes, the president of Designing Digitally. Now, you're based out of uh, the Cincinnati, Dayton, Ohio area. That's correct. And you're here in Vegas. What brings you to the 2013 DevLearn Conference? Um, we are actually an exhibitor, and I'm also um, presenting and speaking on the gamification versus game-based learning. Um, this conference for us has been a, a huge success um, year after year. The eLearning Guild has put this on and it's just been fantastic and it's growing every year. Good deal. Let's jump right in. Tell us about uh, designing digitally, who you are, what you do, and in particular why that matters for colleges and universities that are exploring or already knee deep in the e-learning environment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I started this company in 2001 after working for other e-learning companies. And one thing that I realized is for the other e-learning companies, which I'm not going to name, obviously, um, it was a factory of just cranking it out and getting it out the door. And when I, what I realized is that is very frustrating from a development side and from a learning side when it's supposed to be about the maximizing the uh, learning I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. You said as early as 2001. Mm -hmm. So you have noticed that, that some more progressive colleges and universities we're turning to online education, you know, as recently or as far as far away as 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and and not just in the instructor-led side of it, but also some of the uh, self-paced development work that many of the universities have been focusing on. Um, I've seen now more and more universities going down the e-learning realm, um, but we still have the naysayers and pushback from many universities. So, so tell us exactly what your firm does and why that matters for the higher ed marketplace. Yeah, sure. Designing digitally, what we do is we actually to create engaging educational um, content that is going to stick with the learner and I know that sounds like a buzzword but to give you a good idea is what we do is we think outside of the box when developing the learning experiences for instance rather than just telling your supervisory managers on how to be appropriate at work what we'll do is we'll build an undercover boss learning experience where you go undercover and actually get to be a day in the life of that experience so from the campus side the university side they are prepping students for the future our job is to create the day in the life of what they're going to see in the future. So you are a, obviously by your name, you're a very digitally, visually focused firm, design firm. Yep, absolutely. So there are, there are some colleges and universities that will use a, a Mike's Bikes Shop sim, business simulation where they'll, they'll put their business 101 or 201 or 301 students through a business planning course and they'll use an online tool for doing mm -hmm. that called, called Mike's Bikes. Yeah. So you build platforms like that do you have any off-the-shelf platforms like that, or is it all custom -art? It's all custom based around the need of the universities. Um, for instance, we've built um, PCR simulations, which is DNA extraction. We've built Day in the Lives of a Trauma Nurse. We've built Day in the Lives of a Firefighter. Um, it just depends on what uh, Day in the Life of a Hydraulic Engineer. And your whole job is in a 3D immersive-like experience where you're actually being that person of what you want to be in that career and experiencing it in that regards. Another great example is um, for the University of Medicine and Dentistry that's now owned by Rutgers. We actually built a simulation to where let's pretend that you're now paraplegic and you have to remodel your home. What do you have to do to the home to be able to understand those, to, to make a handicap acceptable? Well, you can tell people we need to make the, the floor or the uh, counters only three feet high. Well, that's very hard to understand unless you actually go into the house and actually interact with it. So we would build a 3D immersive home where you would go in and make those changes and then that material would be saved into the university's learning management system where the professor can see how well you've done and if you've actually completed all of the, the changes to make it handicap accessible. How many, uh, how many designers, developers, administrators, staffers work yeah, at your firm? We have 10 full-time employees and five contract employees. Um, we do everything in-house except for the audio narration. And the reason why is I want a team that has the instructional designer and the developers side by side to collaborate. Um, so what we have found is it's been more effective to have our team in-house. So you don't outsource overseas for any of this? No. Everything is done by, Everything's done by in -house. you guys here? Yep. Very yep. nice. I noticed from your website that you've worked with the likes of uh, Air Force Academy, Bowling Green, uh, Cal Ridge, uh, Cal State Northridge. Can you give us some examples of, of specific platforms that you've built maybe for some of those organizations? Yeah, absolutely. For the United States Air Force Academy, we built a browser-based massive MMO that is literally promoting their university in a way that... And, and just for people that yeah. don't know what MMO is, yeah. can you explain It's that? a massive multiplayer online experience, much like World of Warcraft. And instead of it being World of Warcraft where we're going on guilds, what you're doing is you're exploring the university campus. You're 
kicking field goals in the football stadium. You're getting points. You're upgrading your um, clothing and your avatar with university apparel. And, we, and it's in real time and it's multiplayer. So we have admissions reps in there that are trying to recruit you and showing you the actual campus in real time and walking you around the, the entire campus. So this is being used as, an, as a recruiting tool. Recru yeah, th that is one of very many of the learning experiences that we can do. Um, another great example is we built a virtual campus, uh, a 3D virtual campus for uh, Marshall University. Um, the education department is using it for a collaborative space to be able to do um, instruction. Um, and then there are other examples, uh, Cuyahoga Community College, we just got done doing a 3D simulation on stress on the body um, and showing what stress actually does to people. Um, so we, what we try to do is we, are gonna, we do not have a vertical. We are looking to be able to present this information in a way that your learner is going to be able to understand it. So us not having a vertical allows us to be able to be um, the closest thing to your students. So we come in, ask those hard questions, and many of the times the professors and the, and, and the administrators we, we talk to at the university, they're wet fish. They already understand this. For instance, PCR, um, DNA extraction. You know, you talk to um, a biochemist, they know that information inside and out, and they know PCR. When I say PCR to somebody else, you know, it's just right over their heads. So what we've done is work side by side with them and say, we don't know PCR. We need to learn it and then be able to present this information so that these people that have no idea what PCR is can fully grasp this. Do you have any, um, have you conducted any research that shows that these digital environments, these, these virtual learning environments, actually lead to an increase in academic performance? Um, we have, and we've actually been working with the Guild to do some of that, and also oh, you some say of the our Guild? Could you explain? The e-learning Guild. Um, you can actually work with the e-learning Guild, and they will be doing surveys and research to assist you. So if anybody's interested in that, talk to the Guild. They're, they're great. They're very helpful. Um, not only that, we're doing research with um, two other agencies over occupational therapy. What we've done is we built a 3D simulation using Microsoft Connect that does um, game-based learning for occupational therapy for somebody that's had a stroke, and we're now in the research phase where we're doing 14 test subjects and actually doing the research to find out how well that is that is going for the occupational therapy and the rehabilitation of these people that have had strokes or have uh, muscular dystrophy and how right. this has improved for them. So just to wrap up, you, uh, you must have a business development team. You're constantly trying to sign new clients or work with ones that you've already had in the past. What are some of the misconceptions around the work that you do or the results that you produce around virtual learning environments, 3D learning environments, what are some of the blind spots that college and university decision makers have? Um, maybe call them, maybe we call them objections. Mm -hmm. um, and then what do you say to those, those organizations to successfully uh, convert them in yeah. a sense? Yeah, well, what I try to do is I try to make it simplistic so that they understand, um, especially you can't get into the technical jargon with the administrative people. But this is what I try to explain to them. Um, many times the client thinks that they are the target audience, and that's not necessarily the case. A lot of the administrators are, have a large generational gap between the actual target audience that will be taking this. And, and one of the things you should know is I'm in my 30s. I am a, a third generation of gamer. That means my generation had a um, primary or a core form of education or a core form of education was games. But on the other side of it, the generations that are now coming into college, their primary form of entertainment is games. Mm -hmm. So the administrators, that wasn't even a core form of entertainment for them for games. So one of the things that we have is they ask, well, why would we do this as a game? And the other struggle that we have is we have to provide more analytical data of how well this is going for them rather than building a conventional e-learning module. Because in the past they could say, give them 10 questions if they get 88% or they get eight of the 10 right, that's 80% they know 80% of the content material. With serious game, simulated learning experience, it's, it's different. It's about that cognitive learning experience. So what I say to the administrators, they ask, well, why would we go down this route? I say, do you remember when mom told you to don't touch a stove because it's hot? Each one of us went like this and touched the stove and burn our hands. We were instructed that information not to touch a stove. But we didn't actually learn not to touch a stove or why to touch the, why not to touch a stove until we actually did it. So our primary focus is that cognitive learning experience of saying, let's actually let you fail in a safe environment and still be able to grasp that knowledge. And that's how people learn these days. And that's how we've been learning since cavemen. Trial and error, trial and error, until we get it, then we go and pass that information down. We work with the individuals to ensure that that learning comes down from generations. We're now in the state of games, and it's not going to change. It's going to continue this route. 
Well, for Andrew Hughes from Designing Digitally, I'm Michael Bellico for today's Campus Magazine from the 2013 DevLearn Conference in Las Vegas. Andrew, thanks. Fascinating Thank you. stuff. Yeah, All appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. For today's Campus Magazine, I'm Michael Bellicove. For more information about today's campus, visit todayscampus.com, where you can sign up for free webinars, as well as gain access to a free subscription to our hard copy magazine, Today's Campus Magazine. Once again, thank you for taking the time to visit with us today. We know your time is important and valuable. We don't take it for granted, and we really appreciate it.